Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 538. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to bring the mayhem to you in your face across state lines, across uh, uh, enemy lines around the world. We are the wrestling show that will end ISIS. That's where we went. Uh, We got a crew. We got a crew here tonight. A lot of them localized. Of course, the Riz here in the greater Pittsburgh area. Hi, Sorg. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good, sir. That is fantastic. Also with us out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, he is the man with the Funko Pop addiction, Bobby F.J. Town. Way too much Funko Pops. Way too Um, much. The the reason I'm back this week is WWE updated their shop this week with $35 Brock Lesnar shorts. Come on! (laughs) And no Jimmy Johns. I ate a Jimmy Johns today, actually. Yeah, um, Jimmy Johns isn't that bad. Is it? Is it bad? Is it bad that I can't no, go to Jimmy? No, no, no. Is it bad that I go to Jimmy Johns and can't not think of Brock Lesnar? Why are you going? Wait, 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 wait. Why are you going to Jimmy Johns? They come to you, Sorg. No, I was down. I had to order take, online. Well, yeah, they, I don't think they'll order. I don't think they'll deliver where I live. But I, I, I was downtown. I was mobile, and there was – listen, it was either Jimmy John's or Brugger's Bagels today, okay? So Yeah, or, I don't know what that is. That sounds Good awful. Choice. Or a Jamba Juice. There's a Jamba Juice down there, and I was just like, ooh, that sounds exotic. Also that with us in the most think. exotic of locations of Dallas, Texas, he will tell you what a good deal is. It is Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Get it? Get it? Because I look like a game show host in that photo. Um, <laughs> God, great segue. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to be here to talk about wrestling. You just need a tiny microphone. Yeah, you do. <laughs> no, well, a t- it's a tiny microphone on like a long... Yeah, the Bob Barker style, yep. Yeah, back in the 70s. Of course, this is your uh, uh, Wrestling Mayhem show. You can join us here live every Tuesday at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Brand new chat room, brand new landing page right in our Wrestling Mayhem show dedicated page uh, so thank you everybody for joining us there. Everybody supporting the show every week, and of course um, you can uh, uh, check everything out at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Subscribe to this show. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show. Subscribe to, subscribe to the Midweek War to the Raw Wrap Up. We've updated our, our subscribe links there on the right there, and uh, you can also support the show through Wrestling Mayhem Show on Spreadshirt or ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS, or, of course, uh, you can drop us a line at the email address. That's the wrong one. There it is, that email address. Good times. Good times. How are we doing now? Good yeah. times. <laughs> times. Yay, good. internet you lag. Kind of out there, sort of. uh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline at 412-206-WMS0. You can uh, subscribe to us on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Uh, in uh, video versions on YouTube and Facebook for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Also, you can support us over on the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. A big thanks to our supporters, including, of course, Bo Diggity! Woo! I had lunch with Bo Diggity yesterday. I had gyros with Bo Diggity yesterday. Uh, So so there you go. Uh, Bought him lunch. One of the advantages of being a Patreon supporter. Uh, so, And also, big thanks to our friend Ed Burke, uh, also at the $1 level. And, of course, Alex Carr is out in California. Uh, obsessed, I'm sorry. Jeez, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Power to the Smarks. And Bobby Snyder. Who the hell is that? Never heard of him. It's me. Oh. That's why I can't afford those shorts. Oh, no, it's, it's not. It's not he's Bobby. No. Dedicating that money to the Wrestling Mayhem Show instead of $35 Shop Zone branded shorts thank you bobby thank you bobby for your sacrifice for the show we really do appreciate it around here what's that (laughs) one funko pop per month one funko pop per month it's you're giving a dollar a show how much are funko pops no per year per year per year 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, that's probably it's probably more accurate. Yeah. One variant Funko One Pop one. per year is what you could give to the Wrestling Mayhem show. It cost me a Hot Topic exclusive sword. And, and what do we do? We we do um, a WMS Gold or some extra stuff, including a, we we talked about some prospective stuff coming up on the Indie Mayhem show. Some of our guests coming up. Some of the things our guests said that they might do for us for the show in the near future. Uh, so we'll see if those pan out for us. Some very interesting ideas on the table. So let's get into it, of course. Hey, did you know there's another pay-per-view this weekend? Welcome to oh, that man, era. Welcome, welcome to crap. There's another ma- uh, pay-per-view era of pro wrestling in the WWE. Uh, but uh, it's coming up. It is Clash of Champions. <gasps> A name I'm not going to screw up. A name I'm not going to screw up. So happy. Uh, and, and, and it's looking pretty good, uh, honestly. Uh, every title on the line, including the brand new purple cruiserweight belt. Very excited nice. about that. Uh, so, But we'll get to the cruiserweights in particular in a little bit. Uh, but we have Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens. We talked a little bit about their interactions on, uh, on Monday Night Raw and the Raw wrap-up last night with Mad Mike on the horn there. Um. But, uh, guys, I'm excited for that. That is like a Ring of Honor dream match happening in a mm-hmm. WWE ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we finally get to cheer for Seth Rollins now, which that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and, we're finally and, allowed, we're we're finally allowed, allowed to. to cheer for We're allowed to. <laughs> even though we're probably going to cheer a lot more for Kevin Owens. Well, I yeah, but it's, 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 either one. it's nice that we're allowed to now. It's, it's nice I we're like on the same page. Parts. Uh, and, and speaking of that, the, the the chance for Seth Rollins that everybody got the memo. Oh, we're all supposed to cheer for him now. It was real strong against Rusev last night, uh, and that was that was pretty good. Even even again, as we discussed last night on the wrap up, the the um, um, maybe didn't make much sense, but super face run in save jump off the cage that Seth did at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Very solidly in the good guy role right now, uh, but still being Seth Rollins. Like Seth Rollins has not changed, right? In in, in theory, yeah. Uh, I, I I I like it. I like it's different. It's different, and we've needed different. <laughs> is it different? When Michael Cole is the voice of reason to Seth Rollins, you know he's a good guy. <laughs> like he got on the announce table and, said, and like Michael Cole all of a sudden's like, Seth, you have a championship match coming up. Don't jump. Uh, okay. Bobby, Bobby, you're getting a little bit of a sketchiness on your on your audio. I don't uh, know if you need to reconnect here, here, or something. Here's the thing with that little that little jump. Uh, it looked less like a jump off of a uh, apron, off the apron. I think it was probably like maybe half the size of that on yeah. the floor. So it was kind of weird with him with with the announced team like hyping it up like he's jumping off the top of the Titan Tron. He's like, he's 10 feet above the ring. Oh my God, you're going to die. And he lands on his feet and nothing happens. It's like, eh, ta-da. <laughs> but yeah, I can't, speaking of that match, I can't wait for it. I mean, I, I seriously can't wait for that match. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to definitely, Kevin Owens is doing amazing stuff, just being Kevin Owens. I, 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 I I don't know if we had mentioned it last week on any of the wrap-ups or anything, but I love, much like I was a big fan of Bully Ray just pretty much out yelling the commentary team during his matches yes. over the last year in the Dudley Boys, because um, very a very bo- Bully Ray thing of him. I, I, I enjoy Kevin Owens' running commentary, and that running commentary that I picked up on last week became part of the package at the, at the beginning of Raw, the part where, you're the guy, huh? You're the guy, huh? I don't think so. Like, got got picked up, and obviously they did a little bit of enhancement and isolation on that to put it in the promo. But uh, but the, that's that's just fantastic. Absolutely. Or the best fantastic. one, the best one from last night, I think, was pointed out on Twitter when uh, Rusev uh, interferes towards <laughs> the end, and he just yells, "Matska something." <laughs> 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 yes, absolutely, absolutely. Like just, just having fun with it, right? Uh, no, yeah, I'm really, really digging that kind of stuff. So, um, but, uh, but, but, okay. Like, I, I don't think there's anything else to say, but, but we're going to enjoy that match. Let's get to something that's maybe a little more questionable. Uh, United, United States Championship, Rusev and Roman Reigns. We get it again. Hopefully, an actually full on match. Um, I even this has been okay with me. 
I'm kind of liking this match. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. Like, right? I, I, I didn't think I was good. I, I didn't think I was going to like it because it's Roman Reigns, but uh, Roman Reigns has slightly grown on me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like he, he's still not back from you know from whatever he took, uh, but he's starting to climb that ladder again, and it, it's and he, you're you're seeing it in some of those matches. Like the one against Kevin Owens, it was pretty even of push and pull. I mean, it was more Kevin Owens, but it was even more even than you think it would be. Uh, and this match with Rusev is going to be amaze balls, even though Rusev is kind of still the face, right? Yeah, he's a face, <laughs> definitely. I, I mean, I, I, I obviously. You know, I enjoy Roman's wrestling. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, I think it's just crowd reaction that's beyond the point of you know redemption. But you know, I, I think this is smart, and really, I, I'd be happy if Roman won this because I, I mentioned before, and some people like kind of dismissed me last week. But like, if Roman wins this, he's on the title picture. He's not in the main title picture. And I yeah. think that's what we need. He doesn't need to be in the main title picture, um, especially like after the whole. They didn't say that it was for the main title, but like the whole Shayna's Cesaro stuff like going to be for a title opportunity. Hopefully mm-hmm. it keeps Roman out of the main title picture, which I, I think it's just what you need to do right now. Cause it just, you just need to refresh the whole thing, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, and Roman's Roman's never had the problem of being able to re- wrestle. He can always wrestle. I mean, he, he could, he, he was always good in the ring. Yeah. It's just sometimes his promos can be a little dry, but that could be because they're scripted. And if he's in the main, and and if he's getting the reaction that he is getting, mm-hmm. and he's in the main title picture, which is the main story of whatever show he's on, that's going to drag the whole show down. I feel so. I think mm-hmm. it's a smarter move to put him in something secondary, because it really kind of makes it you know, it, it makes everything seem kind of easier and a little you know. You know, the thing that stinks like he, he is great in the ring, and there's been obvious problems with promos. Like, like that, like I think the most common fan will be like, yeah, it's not great, um, <laughs> but but you you kind of really do need to be the full package, especially if you're on top, right? Mm-hmm. And and he isn't, and, and and I don't know, like like I think each guy needs to find that mix. Like some guys can probably take written stuff and do some good stuff with it, right? And other guys have the comfort level and the skill level that they can just say, all right, two points, okay, let's go. Like, like say, Chris Jericho, right? Or Kevin yeah. Owens. They're uh, obviously being them and, and doing their thing, right? Um, Romans isn't. And and, and we, we're not in an era where Romans doesn't get to go out there with a Paul Heyman or a, or a Bobby Heenan or, or anything of the sort that gets to cover that up. Mm-hmm. Because back when nobody was able to talk, especially these big monster guys that we really wanted Hulk Hogan to beat, uh, you know, you had somebody that would make me believe, you know, like a Bobby Heaton. And it's just we don't have that opportunity. And I think the guys, I think, I think it screws up their opportunities a little bit, right? I really can't tell you if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I think all of us, we've had these conversations before, kind of pine for the day of managers, like real managers, not like your. Your 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 wife that that'll spray uh, uh, gunk in your face in, in the opponent's now, face. No, there's a place with, for that, but that's all we got. With, no, no. Well, re- first of all, Lana. Okay. Is is the anti same thing you just said? Right. She's the anti example where she's actually the the quote unquote mouthpiece to Rusev. And actually is doing a damn good job being the mouthpiece to Rusev, even though she's barely out there and doesn't talk barely. And, and she and, talks, but she's not, you know, fit, she's not. But last night, I don't think she was there until the very end. Right. Some of the um, story has kind of not needed Lana, right? It's, yeah. It's, it, it's been action that kind of spoke for itself, I feel. Mm-hmm. Bobby? Your point, your point about Maurice. Uh, one could argue that the Miz has actually gotten worlds better because of Maurice. Yes. Oh, I agree. He needed, I agree. He he needed that girl on his side, you know, to prove that he was the Hollywood A lister. He needed his wife with him, his, his gorgeous wife. You know, that's just his character, and it just brought out all like 
it brought out the Miz back, you know? I mean, we have mm-hmm. had over the years uh, Zeb Coulter being, being in this position to i think very great success with the with the yeah. uh with the what's the all americans were they the uh, cesaro and yeah, oh, real, americans. Americans. real americans real yeah. americans uh uh to that effect less less effective <laughs> with the uh alberto de rio yeah. about a year ago that was just an odd odd thing that they did uh and of course paul Heyman and even the paul Heyman doing it for both some guy named cm punk and brock lesnar yeah, but yeah. even trying to do it for like say cesaro um, Curtis mm-hmm. Axel, uh, doing those right things, back. you know, right. Oh, well, you did do right back for a while, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, that did kind of thing. Him? And he like proposed to him at one point. Yeah. There was like a weird <laughs> kiss on the cheek yeah. thing that happened. But with, and, and with those you get with, with three of those, you get one Abraham Washington. <laughs> oh, where, didn't he have a where, talk show on the stage or something? Yeah, with Tony Atlas. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I was one of those. If it just went a little bit longer, it would have been so bad. It was great. But remember remember when he like managed the primetime playoffs? Oh, yeah. And how bad that was? That ended up real bad. <laughs> real bad. Real bad. Like, Kobe joke bad. Oh. Ooh. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's how it ended yeah, that's right. Like the they, time. Need to, they need to bring back Armando. Armando, Armando, Armando was just on the show. Armando the show. just popped up on Twitter a little bit ago talking about something. Uh, like, like it was weird. It was Armando talking about like I don't know the DMV or something, and I'm like, that's what's that doing in my feed? Uh, but anyways, uh, we miss you, Armando Estrada, two time friend of the show. Uh, ha 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 ha. Anyways, uh, more more show, more show. Of course. Uh, by the way, I like I like that our tag team and our women's champion are simply referred to as the Raw Women's Raw Tag Team, SmackDown Women's mm-hmm. SmackDown Tag Team, not some world WWE kind of mishmash thing like they did before. Like the universe. Yeah. Well, well that's, that that sticks out actually. Uh, you know, I'm I'm glad we're we're mm-hmm. on that and we're we're branding these things right. So Raw Women's well, Championship, of course, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Bailey. Who is not going nuts over this thing? I'm surprised they add, they did the, the triple threat. I'm yeah. surprised they made it. Into the triple threat. Yeah. Does it does it feel like it's unintentional? Yeah, un- it was unintentional. Yeah. Like, did it feel like that that double pin like kind of was a mistake, and then they tried to rewrite it? Basically, I, think I, that's I feel what like they it's did. I feel like it's supposed to be that. But, it worked out so great because Dana Brooke basically tattletailed on the finish of that match, mm-hmm, <laughs> and, then, mm-hmm. and it backfired on her, which was which set up the, like a really classic storyline with those two. I really do love what they're doing with Charlotte and Dana. Like mm-hmm. I think, um, well, both of them, but I think Charlotte's really established herself as a as a really great heel, and I think that's what you need in situations like this. It's great to have you know great women's wrestling and and good matches you know quote unquote but like you need some heat and you need you know really good heel and i think charlotte really brings that to the table it, 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 it's, I, it's a classic lackey situation isn't it it's a J mm-hmm. security it's it's the uh, uh, uh I, I have that lackey that that isn't terribly great or have enough confidence because that's why they'll do it, things for me whether it's, they're successful or not last night reminded me of just the pinky and the brain, like this, this the, those two, like the, I know it's com- like a comedy, but just to have like that kind of segment going between, like one's trying to be really serious and the other Aye. one just messes it up for somebody. Hi, hi, Charlotte. Did yeah. you notice? Did you notice the pin? Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> did you notice they both got pinned? Yeah, Narf. What are we gonna do tonight, Charlotte? Dana, wow. you idiot. <laughs> but even like even like two weeks ago when like it looked like Dana was gonna turn basically on, yeah. on Charlotte, like that got a pop. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's I gonna think, set up Dana really well. And I think that's a testament to like what they have going for the storyline, because you wouldn't really see I can't really other than in ring wrestling, when is the time that like a crowd really popped for women like that? Like Right, right. And and, and, and oh, I and I think and, and it's nice that it is more than just the three girls that we know are going to kill it out there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that that Dana was kind of a eh, how 
we going to do with deal with deal with her? How's she going to do? Again, one of those that we we question whether she's one that needed to bake a little bit longer in uh, NXT. Um, but uh, oh, but no, she still does. Okay, maybe a little bit. Maybe, but in the meantime, she's kind of on the side here, so that that's fine. Um, but yeah, when she does do the turn, it's just going to be fantastic. So I know we're talking about the Raw ladies um, right now, but on SmackDown tonight. Uh, they had a really good contract signing between uh, Alexa Bliss and uh, Becky Lynch. Yes, really good. Yes, really good. Um, and, and that's, that's something that's come up from NXT too, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. That we are getting these contract signings not just for the big belts, and we're getting <laughs> good stuff like this. And and like it felt like it really felt like an NXT contract signing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So um, um, that's that's fantastic. Like it is infecting upwards, and and uh, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. The best part was Daniel Bryan at the beginning saying, "There, nothing will happen at this contract setting." Everybody booing, and he was like, "Don't boo that." <laughs> He's having so much good. fun in this position. Yeah. Raw Tag Team Championships: uh, New Day against Gallows and Anderson. I think it'll be a great match. We we may mm-hmm. not have been too happy with how we got here, but I think we'll have a great well, match. But it's getting better, you know. Yeah, Anderson and Gallows were actually really good this week. Yeah, they redeemed themselves. I think it's. I, I don't know. I think it's in a weird place. You think so? Because I think Gallows and Anderson kind of have to win, but also like it's we. It's now weird since the New Day had passed the whole big like we've held the belts for a year now. Mm-hmm. Like so, when they lose, it has to be something like really big. I feel and and I don't know if this is it. And here, here's like the way you said it made me realize that if if the New Day wins, then what? And if Gallows and Anderson win, then what? Like I don't know which way, like which way they're gonna go. With hey, you get a rematch. Either you get a rematch. And, and what if the rematch? What if they? What if they lo- They win the rematch. Then what? Then then uh, who who's gonna take the charge? Enzo, gonna be- Enzo and Cass, and then uh, New Day does some hilarious segments with uh, the Shining Stars for a bit. I mean, there's oh, there's yeah. places to go here. There's places yeah, there's to go. There are a lot of tag teams. Yeah. There, 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 are. there are a lot of tag teams. I just feel like if the New Day is going to drop those belts, it has to be big. Like, right. I, I say, I, honestly, I don't think this is the place to do it. Like, hold, I, it's it, obviously, I think Dallas like, and Hold off until... Uh, Survivor Series, Survivor or Series, or even like Mania the Rumble, like because it's got to be something big. Like it's like for the New Day to have that match with Gallows and Anderson at the pay per view, where Big E got injured, so it was like, oh, are they going to lose about now? And in, in like four minutes in like a DQ, mm-hmm. and like, to have this match, and, and and SummerSlam was a year since they won it, and mm-hmm. it's like I don't know, like something about it's like. Tim, I'm sure the match will be fine, but it's just like, which way do you go? Because I think either way is going to be kind of disappointing, in a sense. Because like, you don't want to, you know, give Gals and Anderson another loss. Yeah, you brought them in for a reason. They, you know. But also, but also, like, you got to make the new day losing be big. Like, yeah. Right. I, I I think this is there. There'll be some shenanigans. This is a placeholder to get us to the next pay per view. Yeah. It, it, on, on on the booking side of it, like, but but still, I, I'm How weird hoping, is though is that we, it's another placeholder though. I, I'm hoping we still get a great match in the meantime though, right? So. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. I, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens. We're here. gonna get we're gonna get a great match. It's just a weird right. build up to this match. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, w- w- there, with there, the comedy aspect to now, right? It, it is a bit definitely some missteps here. Uh, uh, you know what has definitely not had any missteps is the Sheamus and Cesaro match seven in the best of seven series. You know, I don't, yes, know, no, I don't know if I'm celebrating this series, but I'm celebrating Sheamus's fine role in the Ninja Turtles uh, <laughs> sequel that came in the mail today. So, so there's that, you know, he looks good when he's, he looks good when announce. he's horny. Um, there we go. Um, I was hoping they would announce it would be a best of, two out of three falls match. <laughs> I know. The final match. I know the dreaded Mad Mike's voice when he was talking about that last <laughs> night. <laughs> it's like, Bobby's going to be right. I'm so worried. <laughs> hey, there's still a few days. There's still a kickoff show so, to, yeah. to, to, to throw that I got in a there. question for you guys. Mm-hmm. 
This is like a mini question, a, 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 a medium sized question. What title would you want to see either man go after 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 this match? World title, hopefully world title, or universal title. <laughs> yeah. What title? Next question. What title will WWE give these two men? Maybe the U.S. US title. I no, 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 no. I think you I guys. See, I can see. You know, you know what I think, and this is going to sound strange coming from me. I think that somehow, after those two matches are uh, after those two, now you got me saying two matches, Bobby. Fucking. <laughs> but after those those two those two guys fight. Mick Foley's going to come out and say that the title that they're going to that he's going to get is the TNA Grand Championship is the <laughs> Tag Team Championship, and you guys got to tag together. Yes, that'd be why. Yeah, you know that's what? Right up, that's, <laughs> that's right up where Mick Foley is right now. I, Mick Foley. Is, I don't. Yeah. I don't hate the idea. I, yeah, I don't like. I, I don't, don't like hate it either. I, I like. I like both get. I like both guys. Listen, Just listen. Cesaro Thank was you. Cesaro was tremendous in in the Real Americans. Mm. Sheamus as a whole with those guys in the in the uh, I mean the United League of Nations. League of Nations. Yeah, the United Nations. Yeah, the United Nations. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we. Three of us just said League of Nations. That, that tells you. That tells you how great the League of Nations. My favorite are. wrestler is Kofi Annan. <laughs> um so so maybe maybe it is a thing where they pair them together and see what what chemistry happens with it i think it could be interesting i'd rather cesar just get the main title yeah. I, me too I, I i'd rather kevin see and, and kevin owens. again and, and, and that's another ring of honor dream matches let's see cesar mm-hmm. and kevin owens go at it for the big well, also also cesar has got a great story yeah you know the mm-hmm. idea that the idea that he was super upset that he didn't get drafted drafted quicker you know, and th- that he feels that like he should be in the title picture. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's kind of right. Like, you know, so I, I, I think there's a lot you can do with it. Um, Seamus, sure, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> sure, why sure. not? Sure, sure, sure. Also, and, and Seamus oh, go ahead. held the title before, too. What's that? Yeah. Seamus has held the title before, too. I mean, he's no joke. Right. In the last year. Yeah, in the last year. Right. How weird is that? Right. Money in the bank, baby. Sami Zayn, mm-hmm. Chris Jericho, because I can't get enough of yes. any of this. Like I, I, I'm so glad I've gotten to eat my words on Chris Jericho. Yes. He's Jericho's, really, gotten, Jericho's gotten really good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know how we always say hashtag Eamon was right? Do you remember? I was wrong. Okay. Hashtag Eamon was wrong. Do you remember? Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I had like 10 years of like. No. No, 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 no. are getting you wrong, Amon. Do you guys You're remember wrong. how awkward it was when we got to suit Jericho? Like, look at those first couple of shows where the feud with Shawn Michaels started, right? And uh, it 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 was it was super weird and awkward. He came out during his stretcher match and was trying to cheer him on or something, um, and it turned into what it turned into. And eventually, a Nitro Girl got punched in the face for reals. Um, but that was my favorite was she a feud. Nitro girl? Yeah, she was a Nitro Girl. Wow. Yeah, look him, it up. Him and him and Shawn Michaels' feud was like one of the best. Ever. Oh, oh, it absolutely. Was, it, it, it was really great. It, it just I don't know. It became that point where Jer. Jericho always came back to the Rumble, mm. and then would always leave by the summer, mm-hmm. and then always come back to the next Rumble. <laughs> and then he just had like the stuff with Fandango was weird, and like yeah, oh him coming out that that period where he would come out not say anything. Shut your mouth! That was amazing. <laughs> but it led to nothing. Amazing storytelling by Jericho. But what did it lead to? Like I don't even remember who he feuded with for that. Didn't feud with anybody. He came back. He that was when with... he came back. Remember when we had all this? Like, uh, remember that little girl that was, sti- what was it, that's sitting yeah, at a yeah, the swing set? And yeah, the swing sets. <laughs> and then and then after he came, that was when he did that. It was like his first time he came out. That was different. Was when he just yeah, stood there and started laughing, and then walked out of the ring, and then next week he came out. Started crying and walked right out of the ring. Listen, it, <laughs> listen. Chris Jericho is allowed to. Uh, he's completely allowed to troll millions of fans on Monday night at this point. Okay, he has. He, he a, has the right. No, I mean, fair. All on his list. 
it just was my favorite, you know, period. And I don't think he, you know, I, I was very down on him until, until recent. Cause I, it's, it's, his stuff that he's doing now, I think it's very much a callback to like 1998 Chris Jericho. It's so good. It's, it's very, very good. Um, he seems refreshed. He seems like somebody who can really, you know, be entertaining again. Like, and that's cool. Awesome. You know what you're going to get, Eamon? It. <laughs> wow. It's, it's good. It's good stuff. Well, uh, and of course, I don't know if we have anything to say about the kickoff show, Nia Jax and Alicia Fox. Oh, I got tons to say about this match. Oh, yeah? It's going to be good. Did you guys see? Did you guys see that Jinder Mahal uh, backstage segment with Alicia Fox? No, no, no. Where uh, Jinder was trying to recruit uh, Alicia for his like whatever thing he's doing now, the peace thing, uh, and Alicia Fox was just going crazy about how he's hitting on her, and <laughs> and like I had to find this, and then after like. During the sh- dur- like during the end, like gender starting to walk away, and Alicia Fox is just following him around, going, "Wait, we're gonna go out. We're gonna go. Wait, we'll just say go out. We can go out. Come on, let's go out. Let's go out." And like her hair is all wow. flying around. All right, all right, it, we're it, we're watching this on the break. <laughs> um, gender, yeah. let's talk, talk, talk it out. I think I think it's really I I like what they're doing with Nia and, and Alicia. Mm-hmm. It also someone pointed this out on Twitter. I forgot who, but it's also really sad to look at this match and realize that oh Alicia can't hit her uh, tilt or backbreaker or her Northern Light suplex. Yeah, the only two moves she's good at. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that Northern Light suplex is amazing. Though. It, it's really good. One it's of the most really beautiful good. suplexes. In the There's a reason she does it five times during a match because yeah. it's the only good move she does. But oh. yeah. Well, like Alicia Fox. No, she's a former Divas champion. She is. That is a fact. That, that is a fact. Guys, so we're about to talk about a few guys that are uh, are, are very impressive and uh, a few of us have experienced in person on the Indies. There's a little thing called the Indies. And there's a little site called IndieWrestling.us where you can pick up... No, that's Bobby. That's Bobby. That's the wrong button. I'm sorry. That's, that's the Bobby, Bobby button. Hi. Hi. Bobby. Bobby, tell Am us about... Am I around the Indies? Bobby, tell us about the Indies. It's um, a movie starring Harrison Ford. What? No. Uh, where? <laughs> That's our first one. Okay. <laughs> Get off my ring. Oh, okay. We're going to try this again then. IndieWrestling.us, <laughs> where you can check out the best in indie wrestling from the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, and so much more documentaries, including Finding Zach Gowan and the Montreal Theory. We're just talking about it on Gold. Find out some things about Raven on Gold at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show if you contribute at the dollar level. Uh, but we got some great titles there. Of course, the very European, The Travels of Claudio Castagnoli and IWC. A title I was very proud of myself in naming until we sent a few copies to High Spots and I went to go see if the listing was there and apparently they had used a very similar title and graphics on their series about Claudio Castagnoli. <laughs> so, but it's there and it's IWC's uh, rendition of it and some great stuff in there. Also, uh, uh, just just finished the editing and we're going to probably render it overnight and post it here on Wednesday uh, as of this recording. Uh, IWC's Rumble in Royal Valley we got to do over the weekend. Uh, amazing uh, 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 fans bring the weapons match involved. Um, people made paintings for them to use uh, there was a full-on guitar, not Guitar Hero, guitar, and shaving cream. Mm. Uh, it was uh, pretty pretty fun. And, of course, the final match between Britt Baker and Ray Lynn. Britt Baker, of course, popping up. Uh, was, speaking of Nia Jax, she's one of the first ones that Nia Jax destroyed mm. on Raw. Uh, and, of course, uh, popped up at the uh, Ring of Honor Pittsburgh show this past Friday. Um, great stuff around the Indies column by our own The Riz and uh, giving you the updates Hi, of that's me. the Indie Wrestling that's me. there every week. Indie Wrestling.us, Indie Wrestling.us, Indie Wrestling.us. Sign up for the newsletter, get a free show, and get updated on the Wrestling Mayhem show and Indie Wrestling updates. And uh, and, 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 and we, we, we hope you'll enjoy it. We have been, I have been getting orders on the site from China. Korea, the Wait. UK. Uh, I swear, uh, judging by this guy's name, I know he's not in America, so he must be in France. 
Um, it's it's it, it is worldwide. The, na- the international wrestling cartel is truly international at this point because of IndieWrestling.us, and so are our friends in the RWA and Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Uh, so it, it's been really cool to see the that response that's been happening. Um, quite literally, um, more people are are purchasing shows from both RWA and IWC since we took over in 2012. Like, nice. very, nice. like it has been growing exponentially, and it's really cool to see indie wrestling getting supported um, at the ground level. Like, literally seeing it being supported when I see this, um, and especially the guys that look like they're ready to binge some shows when they drop in there and spend a few bucks in there. Um, and we got we got cheap shows. We got cheap full shows from a few years ago that are you know just right for snagging and and spending a, a, a Saturday night. So uh, still waiting for that Disco Inferno versus Raven match, Sorg. I gotta dig it up. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fix it. it is, some of these videos did not survive the transition yeah, very yeah. well, so uh, we gotta work yeah, on that. I keep, on. I keep getting the, I keep getting the people at least once a year. I get asked, "Hey, do you have the match from 2002 where Eddie Guerrero was in IWC?" And I'm like, "That is a thing," which apparently it I was. Don't think, I don't, and uh, we'll get into that one off air. So. We're, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I know, I know. Like, we're not even sure if that's like. I think it was like a memorial show or something that that maybe one of the bookers was involved in. That yeah, I, it, it's not us. All I know is we don't have it. <laughs> we do have like late two thousand three stuff that I know are transfer transfers from VHS, uh, like a lot of early CM Punk stuff actually. So, very very interesting. <sighs> Cruiserweights, cruiserweights, cruiser. Yeah. I didn't even mention. I didn't even mention cruiserweights like uh like yeah. like Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander, who I've had the the personal pleasure of of, of working on shows with these guys on there for for Super Indie and IWC um, last night on Raw. Riz, yeah. we we saw Cedric Alexander just a few weeks ago in Chikara. We did, and there That's he right. was in a four way match on Raw. The cruiserweights are here. I don't know where the cruiserweight champion was on Raw. He was on the pre-show, yeah. but they did represent <laughs> in that match. We talked about it a bit last night on the wrap-up, but man, I, I, this is our first glimpse. And plus, of course, of course, the finale happened for the cruiserweight classic. I know you guys talked about a little bit. Eamon did. You guys haven't. Yeah, um, I have. I did. Riz, did. Riz, Riz, were you on that? Oh, there. okay. I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. I miss. I mismembered it. Um, so, Bobby cruiserweights. Go. Um, I just well, it, well, they went from Mick Foley coming out with a card, <laughs> introducing all of them to silence. By the way, silence. Yes, the crowd was silent. Part partly because probably most of that crowd didn't watch the Cruiserweight Classic. Most of that crowd probably doesn't even have the network. They're just there as casual fans usually. Um, to this is awesome chance. Like the whole arena was chanting, "This is awesome!" It, it, a heck of a match between all of them. Um, I I was surprised that Brian Kendrick won. I was happy to see that. Um, I I don't know why they renamed his finisher. <laughs> oh, I got um, some and ideas. My grand metallic got new music. <laughs> Listen, I like the captain's so name to it. When you're when you're yeah. When, oh yeah yeah when you're running a Connor's Cure campaign for the month, yeah, like, I feel like the bully chokes yeah. a little too much. Uh, it, it, be a star, be but a star. it's like you, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, and and correct me if I'm wrong on this, or if you guys have a different opinion on this. I I I, I thought the match on Rob was really good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was cool. It was cool to see guys on the independents that you've we've seen make it to that level, and I thought they did a really amazing job. Um, I don't know. For me, did the match feel kind of slower to you? Um, like it, like compared to certain th- parts, like it definitely was, compared to some of the matches in the classic. Honestly, it was it was for a newer audience. Mm. Like it wasn't for like like the people who have the network and watched uh, CWC religiously, like us. Mm. Uh, but it was for the casual fan, and if you see them going crazy from start to finish, they wouldn't know what actually happened in that ring so they the slowing it down kind of made it work a little bit better i feel like a little bit of that and i also feel like a little bit of for at least two of these guys this may be the biggest audience they've been in front of yeah 
that's like that's, that's, that, that's kind of my take on it too. Like this is the hey, uh, you're gonna go on Raw, and uh, and I know you've never been on like like Raw. You've been in like our little full sale thing down here. And and mm-hmm. I don't you know I don't know if you guys have done Japan and stuff where you may have actually had big arenas or something. Um, we know our Ring, of, Ring of Honor doesn't. Uh, but uh, 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 yeah, yeah. So uh, go out there and, and, and kick some ass. And, and maybe maybe they have uh, uh, new agents, you know, that are involved in I'm, this. That I'm they're like. I'm, like I'm, I'm wondering if it was kind of like a an agent kind of thing or something like that. Like I said, I really did enjoy the match. I'm not trying to take anything away from it, but it just felt to me like a bit slower than some of the stuff we were seeing traditionally with those guys on the, on the classic. And I think maybe it was a case of certain directions, I guess, or certain um, heads of, obviously, you know, I don't know if Triple H is heading up raw, you know, so I think maybe, you know, different environment, different, you know, kind of, kind of thing. I, 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 I just thought about it because there was an interview that came out with um, uh, Tyson Dukes, who was one of the competitors in the Cruiserweight Classic, and they talked to him kind of about like the process of like the whole classic and stuff like that, and how it you know all worked and stuff like that. And he was very open about like the whole w- WWE's process with a lot of things. Like he talked about how like you know there were certain things that they couldn't do, like particularly, and and some people barely got by doing. Um, like for example, they didn't want, uh, they, they're big nowadays on like, uh, moves where you fall on your head or mm-hmm. take like head bumps or whatever. Like they all, he was saying they almost didn't, uh, let Tazawa do his, uh, German suplex, um, because they, they're very stringent on that kind of stuff. Luckily they were able to kind of, um, work some stuff around. He said like, like that, the, during the Brian Kendrick Kota Ibushi match, he's like, I'm sure that burning hammer spot was not approved like mm-hmm. uh because it would not have gotten approved um but maybe it is i don't know it, it, like i said it was very good but I, I think maybe with this different environment i, I wonder if this is going to be a continual thing yeah yeah uh I, 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 there's going to be growing pains and and there is going to be stuff where they're not going as well as the wall they have all these policies and everything which in the long run are good policies for longevity of the people out there in the ring i think Sure. Right. Yes. I mean, we, you know, we. If, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about Ring of Honor, but we saw there that I know we will never see in WWE, and that's a reason for you to go see the Ring of Honor in comparison, right? Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, we are having matches on NXT, CWC, now a bit on SmackDown and Raw pay per views that are on the level of those matches in the storytelling, in the in-ring action, and don't need to do those those potentially unsafe moves that blow our minds on the indies, where people are just working their asses off trying to get to one of these levels, right? Mm-hmm. So, so and I, I see it as, um, trying to think of a good example here, but like minor league baseball, like you have all these guys pl- going balls to the wall nonstop trying to get up to the big leagues. Mm-hmm. And then once they get there, they still do the same stuff, but since they're there, they try to do they try to, you know, bring it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or else they'll burn out and fade away. See uh Yasiel Puy this year. Um bless you. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm talking sport balls. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the, of course they're going to slow it down a little bit and it's, but it was um, still pretty damn good when you looked at it. Yeah, totally. That's Entirely. just my point. Entirely. Well, looking forward that's how, to that's it. That's why I'm walking. Like, that's, that's me just like looking back like that. Is- <laughs> this is just walking away. That's you dropping the mic. Yeah. That's you done. dropping the internet. Done. 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 Yeah. Um, well, either way, we're gonna have to, like I said, TJ Perkins and, and and Brian Kendrick, which I guess we didn't talk about a little bit on the preview, but um, I think that it's gonna be pretty tremendous. I, I I think I see a little bit of, and I don't mind that Brian Kendrick going into this thing because he is kind of the you know known factor a bit as far as he WWE goes. And and a name that people will remember, like oh, yeah, like I mean, how many people out there are like, oh shit, Brian Kendrick? I remember that guy. Where's he been? Remember him? Yeah, it's remember him. Right this week. It, it it fits a little bit of if, remember, it fits remember a little him? bit of that nostalgia. Remember Chewbacca? <laughs> <laughs> They're just doing sound <laughs> 
Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. South sorry, Park sorry. Cruiser Weights. What is this show about? Um, but I, either way, I, I think it's it's a nice nice bit there. I like, I, I like how they're doing with their title picture mm-hmm. because, like, for the world title, you had well, not even for the world title, you had John Cena versus AJ Styles. I mean, I know that's not for the world title, but it was new school versus old school. Mm-hmm. With new with New Day, it was New Day versus Team 3D. With the IC title, it's still the Miz, but you had the Miz facing off against uh, who was his last opponent? Apollo, Apollo Cruz, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so now you have for the cruiserweight title a new era versus an old era. So they're trying to get two of these guys together and clash and it, it's it's gonna be awesome and it's and yes i didn't mean the pun there but uh it worked anyways but it's gonna be amazing so everybody's excited for the cruiserweights that's yes mm-hmm. yes this needs to happen of course we are so needs to happen. So, until jack gallagher shows up though oh her Gallagher, 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 I, Gallagher and that's, both can be. And that's the thing, like, I, I, I've been concerned, you know, we, we've been concerned about this, and I think we've been uh, marginally disproven this about the, the culture shock of, of certain characters, wrestlers, girls moving up to Raw, and, and you're like, is this going to work as well up here? Uh, see Adam Rose. See Adam Rose. Like, are, they, who, are people going to get Adam Rose? But instead, we were getting our Charlottes, our Baileys, and our Sashas, right? And our Enzo and Casts, right? Um, the Cruiserweights, I think, are a different animal. And mm-hmm. I've been worried about it. I shouldn't be worried about it. I'm worried about, like, today's Raw. Because, obviously, this was the thing that worked so well and got me hooked on WCW. Hey, random person from Mexico. And we'll have a guy that tells us all the background story about what's going on there. And, and here we go. Like, that needs to happen. Corey Graves is that person. By the way, mm-hmm. if, if, has anybody noticed that 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 Corey Graves is our Mike Tanay of this generation because he's he's wrestled with most of these guys, um, mm-hmm. and hell, I was I don't know if you saw me freaking out on Twitter last night when I'm like, guys, guys, there's two super indie participants in Rich Swan and, and Cedric Alexander in the ring on Raw for a title shot for the next pay per view, being called by another mainstay in IWC. You know, our, our local thing is something that we're popping for, but still, like like that idea. This isn't FNW people. This isn't Ohio Valley wrestling people. These are outfit in Pittsburgh PA, you know what I mean? Um yes. coming through. And, and 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 you know, they had done like, you know, some of them were kind of pass throughs or whatever the case may be. But still, like there's that legacy there. And that's really cool. Same. By, by FMW, you meant FCW, right? I meant FCW, Corey Graves. Okay, because FMW is the deathmatch promotion in Japan, well, and I would well, really love to no. see that out. <laughs> well, what I got confused is FNW, um, I believe, was uh, locally was Far North Wrestling, which is uh, oh, Corey yeah. Graves' father's promotion in the area. <laughs> so, um, so, so that... That's why that kind of flipped in my head, I think. So, either way, looking forward to it. Any last thoughts on the cruiserweights before we bust out of here? Um, one final thought. Uh, the only thing missing ahead, besides besides the smooth voice of Mario Ronaldo is Daniel Bryan screaming, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> after every giant move, Mama Mia, and Mama Mia, Mama yes. Mia. Hey, Fuego. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, guys, it's gonna be so much fun. Wrestling's so good right now. Uh, geez, SmackDown was good. Just a side note: SmackDown was pretty yeah. good tonight. Yeah, it was. Raw has been pretty good. I mean, mm-hmm. Raw. I think Raw is as good as a three-hour program can muster. Right? Yes. Competition. Right. It's it's within themselves. Fantastic. And and even that week when everybody was like Raw sucked, holy crap, the old day. And it's like, listen guys, don't let that bring the rest of Raw down. It was pretty freaking good, you know? They burned that footage. <laughs> they burned the footage. It doesn't exist anymore. That Raw averaged out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we do how much was watchable as our question for the raw wrap up. All right, can, guys. For that episode, can we get get it re-edited so it's just robot voice over over us all three hours was watchable? <laughs> 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 well, in the post. in the Hulu cut version, yes. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, I want to give a shout out to our friends here locally that have been fueling 
podcast night with Sorgatron Media for about, geez, over two years now. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, and I know not everybody's in the Pittsburgh area. That's Bobby again. Hi, Bobby. Tell me about Slice uh, on Broadway. Pizza. Yeah, I screwed up my numbers, so Bobby gets the, the promotional pizza, uh, switch, pizza, pizza. unfortunately. Oh, sure. Go to the fat guy for the pizza. pizza. Listen, Bobby, how is that pizza? <laughs> yeah. It's really good. I've had it before. It's amazing. <laughs> there it's you amazing. go. Anecdotal amazing. evidence. They're here in Beachview, as well as PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Our buddy Mad Mike was in town a couple of weeks ago checking it out. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, over in Carnegie, PA, uh, on Main Street. Check them out. Good friends. Slice on Broadway.com. PJH underscore slice on the Twitter. Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good while now. Our good friends fueling the show. A lot of guys on the Patreon are fueling the show uh, and helping us pay some of the bills. And meanwhile, these guys are fueling, fueling the show, like literally fueling the show with pizza and, and getting us through the night here because. It's it's podcast night. We're not going to make anything. Come on. <laughs> so thank you so much to them. Uh, we'll get back with the big question. I want to talk about Ring of Honor and what we learned in wrestling. We'll see you in a sec. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. This is Marshall the Bull Gambino. And this is delicious Jimmy DeMarco. And you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show exclusively on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Bitch. It is time for the big question. We got the crew here, Eamon, Peyton, the Riz, and Bobby F. J-Town. Big question this week, guys. I think it's appropriate. So we're just talking about the new generation of cruiserweights. Who, who is your favorite... Old school cruiserweight. And old school, of course, I'm going back to, you know, maybe some old ECW, maybe some uh, WCW cruiserweights that a lot of us, I think, were kind of, you know, got hooked on back in the day. Who is your favorite old cruiserweight? Who? 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 Who's got one? I'll go first. All righty. Uh, it. Technically, counts since he was also in the classic this year. Um, I'm going to go with Tajiri. Nice. Uh, Tajiri was all, was a big favorite of mine. Uh, I started obviously watching him because of his comedy stuff in WWE. Like uh, you know, he, that's you know, kind of where I first saw him. And then I look back on, well, well, one he wrestled amazing in WWE as well. But like some of his old ECW stuff is amazing. It's really there, there's a reason he, I think he was a, a real cornerstone of that show each week. Like. The, I, I like. I think I, he was featured at least once a week on either versus ECM Super Crazy, normally versus Super Crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it was. It, he was really amazing and really always a solid hand. I felt mm-hmm. nice, nice. Hmm. What about you, Riz? Come back to me. What about you, Bobby? Um, I don't know if he counts. He was a cruiserweight. He's my all-time favorite wrestler. We talked about him earlier in the show. I'm going with Chris Jericho. The Lionheart. Lionheart, right? The Lionheart. Yeah. Yes, the Lionheart Chris Jericho. Then That's fantastic. <clears throat> just became a spoiled brat and the rest was history. <laughs> wasn't wasn't that a great time where we weren't so like sometimes there were just matches to have matches in WCW, which you can say maybe it's just because they were so disorganized or whatnot. But but like a guy like Chris Jericho that was like super crazy baby face came out and he and he like would lead back in the crowd you know all the time and and uh, and that was okay and you could you could support a guy like that right mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and look what he became yep exactly so uh, I want to go I want to go with mine and this is not for any th- reason that that you would go normally go by when we're thinking about cruiserweights but certainly um, uh, La Parker. Because that that was the guy. Like it, it was it was one of the one of the ones that was like you know like you know being a He Man fan. It was like oh it's Skeletor, and then he started like doing the chair thing <laughs> yeah. and a little dance on the chair, right? Uh, and that I was always super excited to see La Parka. He was a bigger dude too, wasn't he? he I, I think he became a bigger dude. <laughs> so uh, uh, but, slowly over time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, age. You know, it does that. You know, maybe not so much in the weight limit. Like even to, like uh, you know seeing like like lucha posters around L.A. when I was out there earlier this year. Like I marked seeing like La Parka 
on or the park or whatever they're calling them now um, on those posters. And I don't even know if it's the same dude. I honestly don't know. It's probably like Doink or some crap like that. Um, wow. But anyways, uh, so 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 yeah, La Parker. I'm going La Parker. Although don't, don't get me wrong, I appreciate the hell out of all the rest of them. Uh, all your all your Guerreros and Malenkos and Mysterios uh, going at it every week. So, well, you're in is- the board, sir. What's that? Honestly, oh, I said chairman of the board. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, there's one name that comes to mind, and that is the very last cruiserweight champion before this one. Oh God, Riz, I hate you. Really, uh, Riz No, no, no. But but, no. but for real, uh, I was a like back in the Attitude era of WWE. I was a really big. I don't know why, but it was a really big Taka Michinoku fan. Oh, yeah. Taka was great. Taka was awesome. Michinoku driver. The Michinoku driver, just amazing. Uh, did he? I think he opened the King of the Ring the, the tight, uh, with the tag team with uh, Kai and Tai at one point. I, I think that's what, what he did. But um, just he would, it was him, it was Kai and Tai versus the Headbangers. I remember that. That's so weird. Um, there's also a to, to, uh, to go to that. There's also a really good underrated match with. Uh, I think it's on Over the Edge '98. I think mm-hmm. uh, it's Kai and Tai against Taka and Bradshaw, and it's Taka actually Kinoku and Bradshaw. Yeah, it's a weird combination, but it's really, really amazing. Both because Taka is wrestling, you know, people from Japan yeah. who've wrestled a million times, but also Bradshaw, like. Giant Bat Bradshaw being the shit out of like these tiny Japanese people is really amazing. So he was Justin Hawk Bradshaw. Uh, he wasn't. I think he was just Bradshaw, but he was Bradshaw. he was still doing like the cowboy gimmick. But like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. Like, just the moves he did back then were amazing to me mm-hmm. and to me now. Like watching it, like maybe a couple years. Ne- couple years later and i'm still in awe of what of the shit that he did um so yeah talking michinoku is awesome awesome it, it's really unfortunate that he was there kind of in a period where like wwe like wasn't really focusing on the light heavyweights as much like i feel like if he was in wcw he would have been amazing like like mm-hmm. he would have been considered up the, to the level of like few mysterios and stuff like that mm-hmm completely looking for this match on the network now so i can watch it a little later um <laughs> but uh yeah uh sorry i'm, another, I'm distracted another good one, uh, since since we're kind of blanking here uh, it was kind of mentioned earlier was we, we have all these high flyers but one of the best wwe wcw wrestlers period was dean malenko mm-hmm. good for that matter ray mysterio but but with with Dean Malenko, he was a submission specialist. Mm-hmm. He didn't do flippy shit. He didn't do um, as as uh, Dustin all caps once said uh, the uh, flippy little boys type <laughs> activities. He was more of a ground and pound submission man of a thousand holds. It's not man. Nice. So. The reason he won a PWI Wrestler of the Year in 1997, of like all thi- of like all people to win that award, Dean Malenko. But I mean, his matches really proved it. Like he was very, very talented. Mm-hmm. Um, with all the shit we give him, his matches with Chris Benoit were amazing. Yeah. God damn it. Um, also, by Chris Benoit. Well, we but also, like we mentioned, the like I think lots of people like and they assume this with a lot of cruiserweights, but the whole like oh they are just there for wrestling, they don't really have a personality to get across. Um, go watch the it's one of the coolest things ever. It's the, it's uh, I think it's Slamboree '98 or whatever that cruiserweight battle royal to mm-hmm. fight Jericho for the belt, and Ciclope wins, and then unmask as Di Malenko, and mm-hmm. it's the biggest pop in the world. It's so good. <laughs> Awesome. And of course, from the chat room at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com, uh, we had uh, a wheel saying psychosis, right? I remember when he took his mask off at like one mm-hmm. of the uh, uh, one night stands and they told him to put it back on. Uh, <laughs> scaring the children. Oh, geez. Kind of thing he's messing with us. But uh, L Dandy from, uh, from Alex. 
Who uh, are you to doubt El Dandy? Yeah, man. Sure. What about Elix Skipper? Elix Skipper. That was well, more TNA, wasn't it? Well, he was. Yeah, a, he, was he was. He was the one half of the first ever WCW Cruiserweight Tag Team Champion. Oh my! He yeah, was. and he was. He was Can- He was in uh, Team Canada. Oh, okay, okay. So does uh, does does former mascot of the show, uh, S- Norman Smiley, Smiley count? Yes, absolutely. Sure. And, and, and we're getting called out. No mention of Ray Mysterio. Again, remember Ray Mysterio. I said Ray Mysterio. Yes. We, we did mention. Okay, but but yeah, like like old school Ray Mysterio was fantastic. Not that he's yeah. not now, but he's different now, right? I mean, he's he's he's, he's a different speed because of you know whatever knee, knee injuries injury. he's had and everything. But uh, and, and still doing fantastic stuff. But man, like that was watching. I, I watched back an old Ray Mysterio. I think Dean Malenko match and realizing how good he was doing the crazy stuff they were doing back then was just I mean, absolutely tremendous just look at just look at his wcw stuff with uh eddie eddie guerrero mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. that, that master to the wall with that was that that master's yeah. title match is one of the best matches like ever it still holds up i think moving to guerrero mm-hmm. Moving to yes mm-hmm before he, got co- before he got coked before he got coked out and ran around naked in a hotel room in australia oh. Yeah, that's when it got bad. Uh, I think it was WCW too. I was surprised they brought him in on uh, WWE after that. Is that what you're about to say, Bobby? The juice. Were you about to say the juice is loose? Yes. No, I just said it would be juiced. Oh. Oh. Uh, the, the guys, let us know. Big question: what Was your favorite <laughs> Raw? I'm sorry, Cruiserweight uh, back in the day. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to sneeze in the middle of this you sentence. <laughs> What'd you favorite Raw? And realizing my next Wrong. my next segment is go- going to be mostly me Damn. talking. I think <laughs> Ring of Honor. Don't sneeze. Sure. No groans. No groans. Oh, oh, sinuses are not happy with me right now. Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. Ring so of Ring of Honor was in town Friday, and it was as usual a fantastic show. And uh, I, th- I talked about a little bit on on the um, the, the kind of AM mayhem that we're trying to do on the Facebook Live uh, over there. So you can check out that conversation. You can check out our Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page uh, about some impressions about that. But but I talked about it there, but I happened to catch uh, Monday morning. The Taz Show was doing a Facebook Live uh, of their recording. And uh, it was uh, Taz talking with Kevin Kelly, friend of Sorgatron Media, by the way, um, of uh, the announcer, of course, with Ring of Honor. has been there forever. Uh, since they've been doing TV stuff, more or less, but uh, and, and and it really kind of like struck home like a few points. One, it was a fantastic night of, of tag team wrestling. Uh, Dalton Castle uh, teaming with Jay Lethal and Colt Cabana uh, against uh, the the Bullet Club of of um, the Young Bucks and Adam Cole. Uh, talked to actually Colt. Maybe. I talked to Colt a little bit um, at the beginning of the night, and uh, and I, I didn't realize he had not worked with Dalton Castle yet. Really? Before Friday night, and uh, wow. it was pretty fantastic. Uh, the- and then on Saturday, he was—they were literally in the same shirt. What <laughs> they were literally? <laughs> oh no! Oh, I need to there see that photo online. Oh, I need to see that. Um, that was fun. Of course, the boys with Dalton were actually uh, the fraternity from IWC, so that was pretty cool. Yes. Um, but uh, that the women's wrestling and say Britt Kelly Klein, friends of the show, part of that. But Mary Dobson, uh, 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 Mandy Leon, and uh, Veda Scott, and I don't, I don't know who the who the, the sixth girl was. Um, but uh, uh, great stuff there. Great matches. Realizing with that interview that the Delirious and John Gresham match did not hit the ropes or have a single strike in that match. Wow. <laughs> That, and and I didn't even notice it. I was just noticing the good match, right? Um, just a lot of great, fun stuff like that. Four corner tag match that included War Machine with Ray Rowe, the Briscoes. I want to see War Machine and Briscoes real bad right now. Like that's like that's kind of my tag team dream match there. My other tag team dream match on the Indies, by the way, is Sexy Talented Dudes in the Submission Squad. Putting that out there, IWC. Just saying. Um, yes. <clears throat> uh, but anyways. Uh, so this is kind of my yearly Ring of Honor comes to town, and I need to give them more shots. Now I, I'm not down on Ring of Honor. I just it's just I don't get an opportunity to really follow along and catch the shows and everything just because of life reasons. 
Um, and geez, how much wrestling are we trying to cover here? I'm doing. It's I'm like doing, Lucha Underground for me. Yeah, I, I'm doing three yeah. marathons to catch up on Lucha Underground these next couple of days. <laughs> Check out the events over on the Facebook page. Uh, see you Monday. Uh, and and I'm gonna I want to sit down and watch Lucha Underground for 19 hours on Monday. In between a pay per view and a RAW, I'm gonna hurt myself. Anyways, no, I, so why? Uh, that's how schedule turned out when I decided to do this. Uh, but anyways. Um, but I, I, and, and, and the ring of honor show, I, I think Seclair ring of honor have really kind of settled into a nice spot. You know, I, I, yeah. I know we've had arguments about on the show about like how they handle things like pay-per-view weekends. Um, so I, I watched whatever show was on ring of honor's website today. Mm-hmm. And, and this is the thing that turned me off was they haven't been good about posting a show rather on, on with regularity on there. Like, like I literally like not on Thursday or anything like that. I want if I tune in a week from today when I watched whatever the show episode that's on there was, I want a different episode <laughs> and I'll keep following you like that simple. You say watch it online. Great. Give me the ability to actually watch it online with some regularity. Let me have a Tuesday Ring of Honor day and I, I get a new show from you. Um, so so there's that. That's fine, just so I can follow it enough so I know what's going on. Otherwise, I, I'm still buying a ticket no matter what if they come into town because I know it's going to be a fantastic show. Um, we're watching that and, 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 and realizing this is a house show. This is a glorified house show for Ring of Honor. It's a reloaded tour. They don't have any kind of fun name on it. It's, it's, you know, it, it, it's shot for DVD and on demand. That'll be up here probably in a few days or weeks or something like that. I don't know what their turnaround is these days. Um, but it was a great, fantastic show. Yeah, there's a lot of tag uh, matches. There's a lot of... Actually, I don't think a title was defended on the show. Now I think about it. Because the tag teams were split up into two single matches. Uh, the tag team champs. And uh, and uh, uh, the world championship was in, in a six-man tag. So, uh, Which is fine, right? You still had a great show of wrestling. It, it, it felt like it had more weight to it than if you went to a WWE house show, right? Where you're like, oh, you know, we're going to see some WWE matches. You know, maybe maybe a little bit of different fun stuff, but that's probably about it, right? Um, so, again, I go to check out Ring of Honor, what's in town. Check out the show. It might be for you, it might not be. And I think it's cool to check out different talents that, can we say, inspired this Cruiserweight Classic and the NXT a little bit? Um, the show is not as good as as NXT. I don't I don't yeah. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. Like and not not and I don't I don't want to slight like Ring of Honor for it, but it's just not it's not as good of a a cohesive show as NXT. Uh, whether it be production level or something, which maybe just a it's a lower budget show. Like take it as it's worth, you know. Um, They're building little by little. It's a syndicated. <laughs> it's a syndicated show, but mm-hmm. there's still like a lot of room on there for a lot of people that are not WWE guys. And uh, and this is the impressive thing when when uh, listen to Kevin Kelly on um, uh, Taz was, uh, hey, we're building something where these guys maybe don't need to go to WWE. Like they're not going to make a truckload of money but they're going to make enough to make a living they can do this they can do a bunch of other you know independent shows or or international dates or whatever the opportunities are that fit in the purview of ring of honor um that that makes this a nice you know alternative and uh and they have a brand seeing that that pretty you know pretty nicely uh not packed you know or anything, but it was it was a nice turnout at Stage AE on Friday night, and that they're doing a lot of new towns. Remember, remember wait, ROH didn't wait, wait, wait. ROH didn't sell out. Not sell out. No, there there's still some open seats that back there in um in in, in like the back section, and then uh, General Mission was just standing. It's not like I I couldn't yeah. move or anything like that. Uh, so but still, I think a, a very respectable turnout for what it was. Oh, there's WWE Network starting to run on my computer over here. Yeah. <laughs> There it goes, Taka Michinoko. Um, but anyways, um, but uh, you know, I, yeah, again, it's kind of my week, yearly plea to, to hey, check out Ring of Honor because they came to town. Oh, but yeah, that was the thing because typically, remember, Amen, uh, it seemed that the week before or after they would hit Pittsburgh and then San Antonio almost like clockwork. 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't I think we have another couple months until it becomes our Right. Way. There's a lot more dates in there. They went to Lockport, uh, New York, which apparently is outside of B- Buffalo, which I think is a place that I was looking at doing, uh, going to an indie show while I was up there in Rochester for work. Uh, but mm-hmm. It was just a little bit too far out of the way. Uh, like those kinds of things. I, I, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, um, that they're, they are growing and that's working and, and, uh, and, and they're growing and they're not, they're not, they're not outgrowing. They didn't, they didn't overextend themselves and have to retract like TNA's apparently in the middle of right now. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know there's, <laughs> I know there's new news on that. Maybe we should talk about it on the show here. Uh, but, uh, the, but I, mean, I, I think most of those rumor speculations, mostly maybe other than what Billy Corkin says on the internet. Um, but, uh, but I mean, that's, they're not outgrowing. They're within the, the confines of Sinclair broadcasting, right? They have X amount of money to do these shows. Uh, and, and they have, they have some, some, and, and again, kind of working with old ideas, syndicated wrestling program, right? programming right uh uh, pay-per-views uh dvd sales of course video on demand yes but but the the model for that is interesting like to a point where and i guess WWE does this like uh, to a certain point going on the video on on demand to be able to get shows like this pittsburgh show i don't know what the windowing is there either but um but i think there's a a purchase and subscription kind of window kind of thing going on but then there's tna which there is TNA. All stories about TNA that aren't about Matt Hardy being an, uh, uh, some kind of insane genius are about how TNA is pretty much lining up to get sold. Dixie Carter yes. is on her way out trying to offload it, but apparently she wants too much money from the articles I was reading today. WWE supposedly has a bid. Justin Labar, friend of the show, is going to be on, it uh, looks like, on the Indie Mayhem show very soon again as well. Uh, saying, uh, giving his list of reasons why TNA should not be bought by WWE, or why WWE should not go out and buy them. Um, which are when you, like, what is that tape tape library worth? You know, do we really need those missing Sting matches, those classics? Um, I mean, I really, yeah, because at that point they're buying it for the tape library. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's, you know, if it's the right price, then sure, but like, you know. TNA is not on a level now to where they're viable competition. And, and it's. And, oh, go ahead and finish the video. No, that, that's all I was going to say, really. And uh, the, the fact is, going to a live show is now obsolete because of TNA. Yeah, they don't do any live events. No, 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 no not even just that. I mean, I'm, I'm saying going to a live taping is now obsolete because their best stuff. In the past year, like it or not, happened offset with nobody watching, and you're just watching it on TV. Right. They're just filming television, right? And and WWE tried that. WWE tried one of those. So and then they and then they just tried to do what WWE does better, and that is put on a good live show. Right. Right. For the past few month, for the past month, they have done that. TNA has not. Um, what? What? I yeah. I I I I yeah. Obviously, the tape library. I think there's some great stuff in there. There is great stuff in there with superstars that they're using now. Is that just Sting stuff? There's AJ Styles stuff. AJ Styles, right Bobby Roode, uh, uh, Austin yeah. Aries, um, uh, Kurt, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, mm-hmm. right? To be able to have that kind of back catalog, people that are making noise on their stage, even if it is just NXT, and be able to say, "Hey, Keep did working. you like what Samoa Joe's been doing in the last two years of uh, of NXT? Check out all this stuff over here." Please ignore the part where he has face paint and gets kidnapped, because the so- <laughs> because they did. Um, I mean, that's that's it. Or it becomes the laughable bits of. Hey, check out when Samoa Joe got kidnapped and nobody cared. Um, it came now back. They with, can, now when they talk shit on the Edge and Christian show, they'll have footage behind it. Like, oh, that was yeah. so much. That was so much footage. Um, they're already having uh, fun with. I'm interested to see what the bid will be, or if there, if 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 it's true, the rumors are true that WWE made a bid. What, how much the bid is? I'm interested in that. Because um, aren't you in the? Sim- aren't you? Is in it going to be? Go ahead. 
Over under a million. What did w- WCW go for? Uh, it's rumored, um, like, I think the rumor was like somewhere between two million of, to five million or something. Like, some people say it's 10 million, and that's, I think, an overestimation. But with um, WCW, you had all that tape. You had more tape, and you uh, had a lot more quality in that tape. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, if for Riz's question, I say under. Sorry, like I, because mm-hmm. again, you're only you're buying the tape library. That's what you're buying. Like, you know, it's not worth over a million. I don't think. Right. Now, does it? Does this? count with wrestlers in it or is it just straight up tape library see i don't know if like the wrestlers count like under contract and all that stuff because because it's very weird like with like how like you know if because they like contract. do indie shows and all that stuff and well yeah what are the contracts are you buying the contracts with it like you did with partially with wcw or <laughs> are those contracts i don't know maybe we should ask friends of the show is your contract with the, at tna wrestling or is it with uh panda energy you know what i mean right. um, i don't think you're allowed to talk about that though, no no obviously not no no, no i don't think not. so um uh, i just i just looked it up by the way for the wcw when it was bought uh it was bought by the wwf the 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 copyrights for WWF or for excuse me for WCW were bought by for two point five million, and then shortly after Vince would then buy the tape library for one point seven million for a total of four point two million. Okay, and supposedly ECW went for maybe about a million. Yeah, if that. And again, that has more quality than some of the TNA stuff. Yeah, there's I don't a lot think of TNA is the, on the same level as ECW. No, yeah. no, no. Like, there's not enough guys that were born out of that 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 that. That grew up through there, man. The best of Christian DVD is going to be so great now. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, stuff like that. Um, the but, Derek Bateman thing is going to be awesome. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Uh, finally, we can have uh, uh, the best of. Oh, what was Chris Harris's name? Braden Walker. Brayden yeah, Walker. best of Braden Walker can actually be a full DVD, maybe. Um, but anyways, knock, I, knock. I don't know. I I think. I think it's a if it's cheap enough, WWE does it for a content grab. It's more stuff for the network. Hey, look what we got now over here. Check out this milestones, and and, and there is a little bit of best of Samoa Joe when maybe Samoa Joe makes a jump for the main roster or something, right? Uh, I mean, you never yeah. know. Like I, I think it's kind of taking bets. Um, I think when they look at you look at some of the crazy crazy tape libraries you do see already on WWE Network, you're like, wow, this is not. This is interesting. Like, like it's not what you expected. It's not a WCW. It's not an ECW, right? But like it's, that indie show that with uh, with William Regal versus Samoa Joe. Yeah, right. that's on the network. That's on the network. Wow. And it, it, Samoa Joe looks very young and very in a because they bought random title areas. I, I know WWE's yeah. talking to. Uh, uh, some some people that used to promote, that used to have schools, and and looking at those tape libraries and 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 making offers on those. Like they're WWE is in position, and again, yeah, they're the the, the winners write the history, right? But the 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 history the, the 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 winners also get to put up the museum, they get to uh, 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 buy up all the libraries, and they get to become the like it, it feels like they're maybe on a mission of of wrestling preservation at this point, right? That's why you get interesting hidden gems like this one from like 1930 that was shot for cinema <laughs> that they showed on the network in the hidden gems collection, right? Uh, yeah. Like they they you know maybe there is a, a a mission in there where they have they feel a responsibility to make sure this doesn't go away. We're, we're working on a project and we're having a hell of a time finding studio wrestling from Pittsburgh because it all disappeared. And, and that's something that they're trying to make sure that's like more of that stuff doesn't disappear. This is me with the pie in the sky, hippy dippy. I hope somebody in WWE it, it has this kind of uh, mission, but in the end, yeah. No, and, they, and they make I, money from have being the ones that have that right. And right, repurpose I, content. I, I just think it's also important because, I've, you know, when people were talking about this, I have the, you know, the whole phrase of saying, like, WWE shouldn't do this. They, you know, they need to stop buying their competition. That's, they proved that that doesn't work when they bought WCW and ECW. And to that I say, like, 
the way the way wrestling is now, like if WWE bought TNA, it's not a major bump. It's not a major. No, it's not a. Ma- it's not. A, I mean, it's a story, but it's not a major story. It's not a. It's not a. It's a. It's not really a competition. Like it's not a business changing story. It, is, it isn't going to like you know shake up the business. It's almost. You know? It's almost. We're buying it to make sure that TNA's tape library doesn't sit in a in, in a in a store for you unit in Nashville, Tennessee, for the next ten years. Mm-hmm. Basically, you know, or or get thrown probably away. Five, probably five, because Dixie wouldn't pay for that. <laughs> Chip, Chip, gonna sell and then you see it on pawn. You see it on on Storage <laughs> Wars. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but but uh, and this is probably going to be a hot take here, but hot take. But the reason why, for me, I think the the only reason why WWE bought WCW. Was yeah, they had that little feud. They had the, the 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 invasion angle and all that stuff. But the main reason was so they can put out the rise and fall of WCW. I don't know that about the main the reason. reason. I don't. I don't think that's the, the main reason you main bought a library. Reason. No. They wanted it for the Monday Night War DVD <laughs> that they sold, so they could well, so that they can tell. Their sad yeah. story. No, no. These story. are all yeah, pretty much. Yes. These are yes. not. These are not the the motivations. These are the the net results. They're the well. We got this stuff. What are we gonna do? I well, the low the know. low hanging fruit is doing Monday Night Wars when we open up this network. The low hanging fruit is doing Rise and Fall of ECW and WCW. Right? Hey, we get to tell the story our way because again, we won. We are the winners. We get to write history. And what that 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 absolutely was, right? Um, I mean, that's that's what it is. That's what it is. So, yeah, but we won't be seeing uh, invasion. We won't be seeing any of that kind. Of, it, no, just gonna no. Buy them no there's going to be probably one or two coming. From yeah, you'll have an assessment, TNA. and they'll bring in a few guys that they like. Maybe, yeah, like but, I'm hoping an EC3 would has proven himself. Because that's the thing; they're already doing it. Right, right. They don't need to buy TNA. They're already. I want to say rating. Is it really rating when you're? I I not really because aren't aren't some of those guys? Don't they want? Aren't aren't they going to WWE? Yeah. I James think. Storm. James Storm left and is now coming back again. Apparently, uh, like he's coming back again. Apparently. <laughs> For like a week, and then he'll go back to TNA I'm and realize sorry. there's see, nobody there anymore. See on Ring of Honor, James Storm. Um, no, but oh, geez, I feel like I'm I'm shitting on uh, on Ring of Honor when I say that. But but really, it is kind of like the the extra place where well, because nobody goes to those companies anymore. Like we see the we say all the time, like oh, when a, when somebody leaves anywhere, there's like there's a viable, you know, oh, where could they go to? They can go to so many places, and it seems now they just go to them either. They leave TNA to go to WWE, or they leave WWE and they go to TNA. Like, right. Lucha right. Underground. for some reason, or Lucha Underground. Has but anybody like, made a jump from Lucha Underground? Really, like, like other than Del Rio that worked out so well. Like, <laughs> again, like you said, nobody sort. No, Mysterio, not even Del Rio. No. Well, that, Mysterio, well, yeah, but like he left. But it seems like still like TNA is always the destination for right. some reason. Right. Like because I don't know they, why. Because the, they get the feeling that their signing will turn it around. Yeah, they no, want to they're, they're sign, like, I mean, now with like Aaron, uh, Aaron Rex, Rex. Yeah, whatever his name. Yeah, him. Yeah, Damian Sandow. He's we'll doing, always be yeah. Damian Sandow. He's doing this right. to get gigs. It, well, yeah, like, yeah, it, it, it's a get, little. But you can say, it, "Hey, I'm on TV and demand more money and keep that up, right?" Or TNA yeah. gives them a little bit more money because they're a WWE guy, or they, they're, but, or WWE or, or Impact does the easy thing and says, "Hey, we got this WWE guy. Look over here, you know," and it makes some noise. It, it, well, it, it it's the easy well, thing. And, but but, it, but hold on, hold on a second. But but I think there's also because again, conversations uh, both personally and I've read uh, with people in TNA. Is there is kind of a interesting creative thing happening there, and, and I don't know if morale is happening great, you know, just for everything else happening with TNA, but like creative creative juice is happening over there that creates something like the the leader decay and and and, and uh, you know. The, the, but again, Sorg, that's not putting butts in the seats. But, that's not 
putting okay. money in the pockets of TNA. You know, That's what makes well, cool. right, Watch right, TNA. right. But 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 you first have to get somebody's attention and hopefully build on that. Now now whether they're build, building off of that and actually building a brand that people are going to want to come back to or or be introduced to for the first time that's that's the long tail who knows but the the initially that did its job that absolutely did its job whether you yeah. like the segment or not whether you like the fallout no, I, from it or not the segment was successful and you can say something with TNA has been absolutely successful and I don't oh, financially that, that absolutely, well not absolutely it's been partially successful oh, it was, I, don't, I don't know financially anything like that but the point was it got attention right yeah, but but again, I'm coming back to a a question that I asked at the beginning of the show. Now what? Well, I, that's that's for them you to have, decide. Have, that's for them to you decide. Have, you have our attention, right? Now keep it. And you also talk about putting butts in the seats. Lucha Underground is not interested in butts in the seats. So I think that's a I think that's a philosophy you don't need to think, be concerned with. Butts in, the butts the, the cruiserweight the cruiser part. the cruiserweight classic is not about butts in the seats. I, I, I think for for Riz's point, and then correct me if I'm wrong, Riz. So like butts in the seat don't always just imply like people in the crowd. I think butts in the seats also mean butts in the in the living room chair watching the show. Like that's yeah. what I see it. Yeah, of course they're not doing live events. So yeah, but but they're not attracting a television audience either. They aren't. You know, um, I I. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just still find it that it's a weird place that it's like TNA is still like the destination for a lot of people. When like New Japan is really fucking hot right now. Right. And Lucha Underground, and, and while Lucha Underground tapes, you know, more advanced or whatever, but like, you know, there's other hotter options than TNA. And then, but it's still like, Damian Sandow's got all this momentum from leaving WWE. He's going to go to TNA. Like, okay. They just announced Brandy Rhodes signing yeah, on TNA. Yeah, I mentioned that. And it's what like, no, go ahead, Bobby. What, what if, um, now that Brandy's signed with TNA, if Cody also signs with TNA and the WWE buys TNA, would he be under contract <laughs> with WWE again? It's like when I left the bank for the other bank and the bank got bought by the first bank that I, I left because I was pissed at them, right? Or, or <laughs> it's, like, no, it's like, it's like, do you remember, do you remember when they bought WCW like a month before was when, um, uh, Jerry Lawler left WWF because he got mad that they fired Cat. And he, and the plan was that he was going to jump ship to WCW. <laughs> and then, like less than a month later, Vince is like, "I bought it." <laughs> like, you know, it's it's sad, but yeah, it's I, I just don't get it. I, this, you know, wrestling is so good right now. We say this time and time again. Wrestling is so good right now across the board. Why, if you're such a hot commodity like Damian Sandow, who was a hot commodity leaving WWE, why go to TNA? Something's attractive, so whether it be the schedule or, or or opportunities they're offering or or something like that. Keep in mind, somebody like Damian Sandow and Aaron Rex came out saying, you know, maybe I won't keep do wrestling. I have other opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of these guys are coming out saying, man, I might do some acting. Man, I'm getting some. This thing's coming up, you know. It, it, it's not you leave WWE and you figure out what your next wrestling thing is. You figure out what your next thing is, right? That's true, but I think other than Cody Rhodes, but other it, than Cody right. Rhodes, that's been the case. And I think, I think, I think when we're like, why are you doing it this in TNA? It just looks like you're doing nothing. You don't know what else they're working on because a lot of times these people are working on other things that you don't get to see. You know, you don't notice that unless it gets mentioned like it, it got name dropped tonight on uh, SmackDown. You, you know, Rikishi's working on a movie. I do not. That's a thing that's happening. And David Atunga and, with Adam Sandler. Right. Really, probably a Netflix <laughs> movie. So I guess that kind of comes together. Right. But but still like like uh, uh, like like that kind of stuff, you know, just because you don't see it every <laughs> week on your television doesn't mean did Bobby just look it up. <laughs> no, I just thought of the call to. With like Halle Berry plays with Adam Sandler. <laughs> wow. Oh jeez. Uh, but it, it, it's interesting. It is an interesting. It's always an interesting time in pro wrestling, and I'm I'm glad it, we're we're having a happier time with pro wrestling than we yeah. did mm-hmm. when we started this show. <laughs> when we started this like to, tonight. Or no, 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 no. I'm talking about or... ten years ago when we started this show. So. 
Remember that? Remember, remember Wrestling Ma'am Show episode remember, one? Remember <laughs> Steam Machine? Oh, I challenge you to go listen to the first episode of Wrestling Mayhem Show and report back. Remember that? Oh. Wasn't the, fir- the first? Uh, didn't I hear like the first episode was like? Didn't somebody yell out something about Lita? Yeah, it was like me yelling about we just saw his, her titty nipple. Yes, because it was a live yes. celebration, and I think we might have recorded it like right after Raw. Um, because that's what I was doing back then. And yeah. The Hello, Kelly Klein, <laughs> Women of They're Honor, Lita. retweeting me. All right, guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show. What did you learn from wrestling this week, gentlemen? Oh, oh, so oh no, Eamon, you learned something, right? No. Oh. Um. <laughs> God damn it. Um. Sorg, you go first. How about you go first? You never go first, Sorg. How about you go first? <laughs> yes, Sorg, you go first. <laughs> you guys. As we all think of the same. Uh, you guys. You know what I learned? I had one. I, I learned one. I, I did learn learn something um, um, yesterday about um, comedy and pro wrestling. Uh, great, okay. inter- great interview coming up with the Indie Mayhem Show uh, this week. Uh, that will be released this Thursday. It's uh, Indie Mayhem Show... 130 i think is the number um uh so so uh matt light tells me and matt light's the one that had the uh viral video where he stone cold stunned the improv pittsburgh uh manager apparently and uh, uh he says well you know uh, uh comedians love wrestling like almost across the board like just and, and which you know we see this a little bit that we watch wrestling guys the raw Ron Funches at Lucha Underground, you know, but, you know Matt Light, for instance, he says, says there's, there's like Chris, and, Chris Cubis has been doing a couple of spot pressures. Yeah. Right, right, the John Stewart, right? Um, mm-hmm. Like it's fairly like, like oh yeah, they're just like guys that happy to be fans. Like no, like most apparently most comedians like pro wrestling um about the performance about about everything like that um and my, he gets a little deeper into it but that that was kind of a an interesting revelation that that makes a lot of sense you know uh so uh, and aside from that you know rvd has been doing comedy for like a while yeah like out in la and stuff so I'm looking forward to that. I, I'm looking forward to that. We're going to have to figure it out. I think it's a, tu- it's a Monday or a Tuesday night. So either way, you know, it's going to be tough to schedule there in uh, late November. But uh, we're going to get, we'll have to get out to that one. So tickets. Hey, we're giving away two tickets to RVD's uh, comedy show at the N64 No Mercy tournament that we're doing with Looking for Group in a few weeks. Um, I believe that's on October 7th. Uh, whatever the week, the Friday before the No Mercy pay per view, which is uh, two weeks from Saturday or two weeks from Sunday, so it would be two weeks from this Friday. <laughs> so, which means, which means we'll have three more pay per views before that. Yeah, yeah, something and like that. Something like NXT that. Special. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take so take over more another CWC want. tournament and uh, <laughs> and so much more. Uh, big news on that. Uh, DJ Lunchbox will return. <gasps> What? What? DJ Lunchbox. You didn't tell me that. DJ Lunchbox. I confirmed a couple of days ago uh, is planning to be on hand. We are going to stream this on Twitch TV with the help of our friends at Looking for Group on their station, and uh, we are we are going to attempt to commentate the tournament. Nice. So there you go. That's that's what we're doing. Nice. Also, if you're a Patreon by the end of the month at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, you are eligible for half off your entry fee. So you'll be paying $5 instead of 10 I know this is super local job, to you Pittsburghers yeah. out there, uh, but uh, we will be streaming. Uh, so I hope you guys will join us on the live stream as well. Uh, hopefully we can capture we that. Have, we should have giveaways on the live stream. We so, yeah. have... We... I... We... I... We'll see what we can do. But I don't know. That's a great idea that we should talk about off air, Riz. Um, yes, so it won't cost me as much to lose. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Also giving away $100 to IndieWrestling.us, uh, uh, $50 for the second place uh, for digital downloads as well. So I have stalled the hell out of I this. What did you guys learn one. for I wrestling? I got one now. Um, I went back and listened to Kevin Owens on Chris Jericho's podcast, and I learned. How dare you? I how, learned. No, how how dare you? What? 
talking about another podcast on the show. Oh, Chris Terry. Chris is different. Um, I learned that uh, apparently Ke- uh, Vince McMahon, when Kevin Owens debuted on Raw, told Kevin Owens, if anybody asks why you're here, tell them to go F themselves. <laughs> <laughs> wow because he, he was he was dressed in his gear and he went into vince and he's like vince is like well, well he's like i i don't want anybody to know why you're here so just go around and, and just mingle but don't say anything he's like well i'm gonna be wearing my gear what what do i say you know if anybody asks me just tell him to f off <laughs> just classic vince <laughs> that's great that's what i learned that's amazing also also wwe slam will ruin your life Problems. We already we already learned. Wait, how much money it. did you sink into it, Bobby? No, no money. Just the stupid tap joy things. Oh, and don't do that! Don't no 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 no! Away. Don't do that! You don't know what you're going to walk I away know, with no. for something like that. Riz, what did you learn? I, know. I learned I can be shocked on a weekend when there's no wrestling of wrestling that's happening, and I can watch wrestling without any pants on. As the case was with Shakara. Ah. Shakara, uh, if, if for the people who don't know, uh, did a Facebook Live stream of their entire night. Um, what was it called? A Black Goodbye? Is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah, the Black yeah. Goodbye. The Black Goodbye. And the. The Drew Gulak versus Hallow Wicked. Just watch that match. It's pretty damn amazing. I, I expect. Um, but but there there was no there there were no fanfare for them streaming it. There was no like month long. We, like I didn't even know it was happening this week. Like the the actual show until they said, hey. Uh, by the way, surprise, you guys get to watch it for free. And I did. And it was amazing. Rock Lobster was there. That's, a, that's a brilliant gimmick, by the way. Oh, Rock Lobster. Bobby, you need to watch Hermit Crab. <laughs> he walks sideways. Nice. Um, no, Rock Lobster is a brilliant gimmick. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, they're, they're very nice people, too. Um, but... <laughs> Man, that, I mean, and it was it was actually like a live show. It wasn't like peris, periscoped or or like shown from a, a like a phone camera. It was actually done like from a switchboard. Mm-hmm. Like they switched they, the, the multiple cameras, mm-hmm. and I was very impressed by how it looked, looked and felt. So I don't think it's up now because I think they just did it for a day. They just left it up there for a day or two. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was pretty, a pretty darn good surprise Saturday afternoon. Go, oh, there's wrestling. It's on my TV. I just want to point out, I just uh, hit up the uh, WWE Slam app and uh, bought three different packs and uh, three times, or actually maybe four different packs and three times got the Clash of the Champions, Xavier Woods with Trent Francesca. I am not complaining. I got, I got to say. I got that one. Too. Yeah. I got two Sashas and, and an Xavier. I got a ton of them. I got a ton of them. Those are great. Two Xavier's. Great stuff. What are great we going to do with all these cards? I don't know. I don't know. Virtual I want to put them in my board. virtual uh, shoe box and forget about them in my virtual <laughs> closet for 10 years and watch the value decline. My virtual bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. What'd you learn? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week also something from Kevin Owens. Uh, I saw a clip. <laughs> From a panel he was doing for some uh, something or other, uh, like where he got fan questions, uh, and he talked about how during during uh, he gets drug tested and the only thing that comes up on the drug test is pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Kevin Owens for that. I remember he had a munch or something. That's great. That's amazing. I remember uh, what my original one was. What is it, Bobby? Um, I I was really excited the day they released the trailer for WWE 2K Games Career Mode. Yes, and it, it stars Paul Heyman. Yes, and it looks amazing. And I have yeah. the game already pre-ordered. I'm super excited. Yeah, the game actually looks really good this year. Mm-hmm. 
weird. It does. Yeah, that, that, I got the NXT <laughs> version. <laughs> this game looks good. It's weird. It's, <laughs> wait, you say you're buying the the NXT version? Yeah, I got the NXT version. They announced a bunch of DLC today. That's yep. Uh, <laughs> Wheels is saying that that he's he learned that yeah, the DLC the is. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry for rolling over you guys. Uh, Will said the DLC is glorious, is what he learned. Uh, Alex, yeah. is, Alex is in the chat yeah. as well. Which, I don't think they announced Bobby Roode, but okay. <laughs> um, Alex also learned... Oh, no, I lost it. No, that was somewhere else. Oh, that was on Facebook. That's where it was. Oh, he learned about the Facebook Live as well. They're fully capable of streaming uh, Facebook in a professional manner. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we, we're going to probably talk about the Facebook Live on Indie Mayhem show later of this week and tonight if you're on the live stream guys thank you so much bobby f j town on the twitter and patreon supporter extraordinaire of course the Bob riz Battle podcast riz plays games on <laughs> riz plays games on the uh youtube and you do to a podcast together guys we do it's it's the boss battle podcast also boss battle podcast.com yeah what he said <laughs> there you go uh amen to please on the Twitter, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Check out Inspire Pro. Yes, we got a show this weekend. Screw Clash Champions. Wow. <laughs> yeah, is that what it's called? <laughs> no, it's not. It's on the same day. Because uh, that's the that's the other thing about WWE. Like, we're going to add more pay-per-views. Ours is called Clash of the Titans. Um, and it no, stars Harry uh, Hamlin. No, it's, it, it's called... Championships clash. Championships clash. There are some. Cha- we have a champion versus champion match, so I guess that's kind of true. Um, yeah, you can check it out if you're in the Austin area. Uh, TNA's Jade slash Mia Yim will be there. Um, yeah, the go check it out. Ariza. What? The Austin Ariza. Wow. <laughs> Uh, be dressed up as a sailor, Shaman. Guys, be dressed up as a sailor. <laughs> check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com and uh, subscribe to the show. Support the Patreon. Support the show. Buy a shirt. However you want to do it. Or share it with your friends. And we'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.